Okay, what's going on everybody? Uh, we're doing a live update today. It's March 3rd, 2021. And I want to jump right into the topic that's in the title of the video just in case someone's watching this much later down the road and they just want to get right to the meat. Um, I wanted to talk about what the best glue is for leather craft. We've got a couple different things here. Barge is one of the more famous ones that you see a lot. Definitely has the cooler container, that's for sure. And um, you got uh, Aqualim 315 from Renia. And you get this from District Leather Supply. Um, these are two that I use a lot in the shop. And uh, I always get questions about which is the better glue. So um, I have a ton of this stuff. Oh no! Phone call! Sorry about that. Um, so just my opinion on this. Um, barge is, I think it's probably a little bit stronger. It definitely is. This is stuff that's used in shoe craft. Uh, a lot of times it's used without even any stitching or any other kind of, <laughs> whatever you call it. Um, any other kind of like contact, it's just the adhesive. So it's, it's really strong. The only problem is it's insanely toxic. I mean, I, every time I use it, I get a headache. It's got a really strong smell. Not a bad smell, but it's strong. So um, a few years ago, I kept getting messages from both Odin and Bill from District Weather Supply. They're like, you've got to stop doing the, the uh, barge. And so I finally um, started using Aqualine 315, and I was worried that it wasn't going to be as strong. This is water-based, so it's not toxic. You're not gonna get a headache. It has a pretty decent, um, you know, there's no like weird smell to it or anything. So um, once I started using it, I realized that it's just as strong as barge, at least from what I can tell. Or at least I should say for the application I use it for, because I'm not using it for permanent, um, you know, fixtures. It's more of just, I, I use it to hold things in place before I sew. And so it's plenty strong for what I need it for, but from what I can tell, it's it seems just as strong as this. Maybe we'll do a test. That might be like a, a good actual video to to like that would require some filming and editing outside of a live stream. But it'd be a pretty cool test to see what's actually stronger. But um, from my experience, I really love Aqualum 315, and I just. Um, I've been using this stuff, but since we're doing a little more production in the workshop now, I've ordered a 100 ounce bottle and we'll be getting some more in. But you get that from District Leather Supply and I already put a link down in the description if you wanna go click on it and pick some up. Um, so anyway, that's kind of just a, you know, a general quick answer. They're both good, but just for, your, for the sake of your health, <laughs> Um, use the water-based stuff. There's a few other options out there too, like Tandy has a water-based one, I think it's called Eco Weld or something. Uh, it seems to work pretty well, but this is by far the strongest water-based stuff that I've used. And um, yeah, go pick some up. So let's check into the live stream, just make sure everything's going well. Uh, I didn't do the Instagram one with it this time, so hopefully we're gonna be a little bit more streamlined. Not so distracted. Uh, looks like there's a little bit of a lag. It's like three or four seconds behind what I'm actually saying. So, hope that doesn't become a problem. But anyway, um, Phil Dobbs, what's going on? Dennis Copland, good morning. Tim Parrish, hey Tim. Uh, Cyclone 538, that's Jose, what's up? Uh, Winona. Alexis Saab, what's going on, man? Josh Haynes from Kansas City. Uh, your videos helped me get into Leathercraft. Cool, man. Thank you so much. Phil Dobbs, where do you get that little spatula? Same place. I get that from District Leather Supply. Those are really nice to have. Uh, another quick tip on glue. If you use the bottle like I do, um, you can't just leave it as a big old bead, big glob of glue, because first of all, it's going to take forever to dry. But also, once you make the, you know, the connection, man, I'm struggling to find words today. But once you uh, make contact, it, it might create a little bit of a separation because there's such a big bead. And so, 
it really helps to have a spatula or a brush that you can spread it out with. Sometimes I just use the nozzle of the glue bottle and kind of spread it around, but a spatula really helps because as soon as you spread it out, it dries almost instantly. It's almost you know instantly ready to uh, put it together, and then you get a really nice, clean, flush seam. Um, all right, Garrett from Berlin, Germany. What's going on? Um, Michael from Cleveland, Texas. Love what you're doing, man. Inspired me to start up myself. Right on. Thank you so much. James Sullivan. Hey, guy. Let's go. My name got called out. Of course, man. Yeah. Um, Jose, you've been a big supporter of ours, so I've, I always love seeing your name pop in a live stream. I appreciate you hopping in all the time. Phil Dobbs, true. What glue would you recommend to glue leather to wood? That's a good question, and I don't know if I have a good answer. I, I'm guessing it would actually be the same thing. Like, Well, you know what? If I was going to do wood... Um... I'm not sure if the water-based stuff would work on wood. If you're if you're trying to do it on wood, I would try barge first because this stuff sticks to anything. Um, but I don't know. You might have to try something else out. I don't have any experience with that. Sorry about that. Uh, would shipping the water-based adhesive in the winter damage it? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, we've we've kept some um, we've kept some glue like in the back of the shop here and sometimes it gets really cold out here if I don't like uh, this is getting into the weeds but this is my little remote for our heater and sometimes I get way too hot because it's sitting right here and it blows on me so I'll turn it off but then I'll forget to turn it back on when I leave the shop and we've had a couple freezing nights where I'll come back and all of our edge paint is completely destroyed but uh, the glue never gets ruined so I think you'd be safe edge paint for some reason though that's why I never buy edge paint in big quantities because I'm always so scared of it uh, freezing and getting ruined out here so I'm all, I'm just constantly ordering edge paint all the time uh, but Parker's getting skinny thanks man I appreciate that it's not true I think it's just an illusion of the camera or something because I'm definitely not it's like the fattest I've ever been in my life <laughs> post uh, you know holidays uh, haven't been exercising lately other than uh, riding and racing so I gotta gotta get back into shape I don't know that I've ever really been in <laughs> shape so I can't really say back in but gotta get in shape uh, what size is your shop Keith it's uh, 16 by 40 and it's great for like a one-man operation uh, which is kind of what I've been using it as just a video studio and one-off projects but now that we're starting to take on more production it's definitely getting a little bit too small We've got three people coming in here, and it's just it's a little too tight. Uh, Cyclone, I, anytime I enjoy your videos, I will continue to be a supporter. Thanks so much, man. Took your course, loved it. Best course out there. Thank you, Meru. Thank you so much. That really means a lot because I, the, the most important thing for me for creating that course was to actually be helpful. I want to know that when people are taking it, there's an actual transformation helping where they come out of it going, um, yeah, I know exactly what I need to do to start selling my work. And it's hard to do that because everybody's in a different place. You've got people who have been selling for a couple of years and just need to improve a few things. And you have people that are, you know, just learning the craft and haven't even really thought about selling yet, but, um, but you know, take the course. And so it was really hard to create something that was appealing to everyone, but I really appreciate that. And um, based on the feedback I've gotten now, I think that the best uh, candidate for this course is someone who um, is in the very early stages and you know just starting out, has never been involved in like a business on social media or anything like that, never run an e-commerce business and uh, just needs like the basics of you know what do I focus on um, especially as a craftsman so if you're just you know having fun with the craft and you'd like to start earning some money doing it like to either just pay for the materials and allow your hobby to kind of pay for itself or you want to make some extra side cash 
and you're just getting started, this is a it's a really good course for it for that person. Um, there's people who have already been running a, a business, selling their craft, selling their work, and I think that it's there's still some things in there that have a lot of value for you. So um, I definitely wouldn't shy away from it if if you're in that position. But the the good news about it is we have a 100% money back guarantee. If you take the course and you feel like it didn't bring any value to you, we do a, a full refund and no questions asked. So there's really no risk in doing it. Um, my feelings are that $97 is a small price to pay for um, you know the amount of money you could make after you get your business all set up and you're focusing on the right things. Uh, you know you're going to be making thousands of dollars. Um, so again, I don't really like to focus on the money, but I feel really good about the price point and best news if it's not worth it to you you get a refund so um, Tim Parrish 13 315 works good on wood to leather oh cool there you have it Tim Parrish has a real-world scenario um, Aqualand 315 is also a good candidate for doing wood to leather love your latest video great voiceover thanks Tim I appreciate that yeah, the format's always like something I kind of struggle with. I never know if I should just like stay silent and just film the work or if I should be doing like some voiceover to put in some helpful information as far as like what leather and tools I'm using, what sewing machine I'm using, what thread size, that kind of stuff always shows up in the comments. So I kind of like the voiceover. I think it's more helpful, but I appreciate that, Tim. Thank you. Warren Whiteman says, hello from the UK. Love your work. You're an inspiration to all those learning the craft. Thank you so much, Warren. Man, that kind of stuff. Jose says, been working on my website so far. Been doing somewhat well on Instagram. Been getting hit up for leather watch bands. Oh, cool, man. That's great. Focus on that then. If that's something that like you like doing and you're getting a lot of requests for it, I would become Jose the watch band guy. And that's it. Like, focus on that. Don't get, don't get lost just trying to make, you know, all the same wallets that everyone else is doing. Um, find a niche. Make it happen. Um, Dan says voiceover is the best. That's cool, man. Well, thank you. I'll definitely focus on that. Put out some more videos that way. Um, okay, so I just wanted to talk about uh, this live stream. I'm hoping, I can't remember if I said this before, but... I want this to be a regular weekly thing. And I know a lot of people say that kind of stuff and it's hard to like, ah, yeah, whatever, you say that. I've probably even said it before. So I really want consistency with this live stream. So every Tuesday night, um, if you're listening to this, send me a DM Tuesday night and say, don't forget to do the live stream tomorrow morning. Um, Cause I really want to do it. I just get so caught up with whatever projects I'm on and I forget, um, it's just hard. So I need some accountability. I want this to be a regular thing to bring value to people and help out. I like it because it's kind of a two-way street. You can ask questions and I can answer and and then I'm able to ask you guys questions and give some feedback as well. So um, let's keep it going. Mike Simmons, what's going on, man? Good morning. Mike's going to be heading our direction and helping us out. I'm really excited about it. I don't know if he'd want me sharing that. <laughs> Too bad. It's live. Sorry, Mike. Um, I imagine that's an exciting thing. So I know I'm excited about it. We definitely need some serious help around here and things are changing quick. I'm really hoping that very soon we can get a new shop. There's just so many little factors that come into play. You know, we're still financing this one. It's almost paid off, but I just, you know, it, it, it's hard when you got to I don't know, there's so many factors that come into play. But first and foremost, we need a good shop that we can have Ian, Josh, Mike, uh, you know, working very comfortably. They got a bathroom, running water, they got a place they can show up to any time of day and not worry about, you know, basically breaking into our yard. It's it's so frustrating. Sometimes the snow gets so built up you can't even open the gate. So I spend a lot of time shoveling snow, making sure that they can get in and out, even at weird hours of the day. Um yeah, I'm just excited. You know, we're we're definitely like making kind of a transition to a whole different, um, I don't know, not business model. Our model's the same, but just I guess our uh, just what 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 our kind of the back end stuff is going to be very different for us. And 
Um, just in case anyone's wondering, we're still keeping our relationship with Waterbury, and that's going to be, you know, super helpful. They pump out a lot of stuff for us, and um, I want to keep pushing work to them if we can. So that's going to always going to be a big part of our business, but um, but we have a lot of things that we can start doing just right from here in the shop that we need to ramp up on. So anyway, long story show, short. We're excited to have you, Mike. I'm really glad you're coming. Um, the Shade Tree Rocket Surgeon Timely Voiceover has been helpful for me. Cool, man. That's good to know. Uh, love from India. Thank you. Thanks for jumping in. Hey, what's up, Jeff? All right. So again, text me Tuesday night and remind me to do the live stream. I really want to do it and keep it up. So um, I've got alarm set on my phone. Um, I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna try and. Uh, be a little more consistent with that um, you know this is different than just like the regular videos I've been putting out I want the, it to be a little bit more of a personable connection and and the two-way street kind of thing so it'll be good I'm trying to figure out why we have such a delay I keep looking at the live feed and it looks like it's four or five seconds behind the real time so I apologize if the comments are kind of coming in late or my responses to them anyway um oh i missed warren's comment let me pull back love your work your inspiration oh cool yeah yeah i did see that one um meru winkleman says dm to parker or stock and barrel either i know i i'm pretty bad at replying to my stock and barrel dms they get backed up but the ones that are usually the ones that i um, kind of delay myself answering are the ones that are hard to answer that have like you know uh, oh, I gotta talk to my business partner about this or I gotta consider other things um, I'm really slow at answering those ones back if it's just like a, hey love your work I'm usually pretty quick at just being like thank you so much or hey don't forget the live stream on uh, tomorrow morning um, I'll be able to see that and yeah it'll be appreciated either one though my personal at Parker underscore Litchfield or the Stock and Barrel Instagram. Same bat time, same bat channel next week. Yeah, same. Everything will be the same. Just right here. In construction, they came out with a water ass contact cement. <laughs> I'm guessing that's supposed to be water based for doing laminate of plywood. Uh, didn't get didn't gas everyone but wasn't nearly as good I would do the barge for leather to wood yeah it just depends I mean I, I, you can't argue I think barge is definitely the strongest one but I am interested in doing like uh, a test I think that would be a pretty cool pretty fun video I'm gonna write that down anytime I think of a video topic I gotta write it down or else I'll forget um, Let's see here. Uh, Aqualim versus Barge strength test. There we go. Okay. Leo says, glad to see you're back. Thanks, man. I, I'm always curious what people mean when they say that because I've always been here. I did take a little bit of a hiatus in early 2020 while I was building the course, but I still was posting videos here and there and I was still active on Instagram. So, um, but either way, that's a nice comment and I appreciate that, Leo, thank you. Um, one quick question, what is your view on leather dye with an airbrush? Um, I've never used it, but I've seen some people do beautiful work with it. I think uh, Andrew, Sam Andrews from Andrews Custom Leather uses an air brush for dye so yeah I, th I think it can do great I just don't dye much I usually just buy the leather straight from the tannery how I like it and then uh, yeah I, I don't mess with dye it's it's pretty hard to do to be dying in a production setting it's messy normally I don't write a comment but I really appreciate everything you do and I'm still learning leather craft slowly but doing okay I'm learning a lot out of your videos thank you Jim Gosh, man, oh, that stuff, I really appreciate it because, um, I don't know, I guess just a little bit of a window into my soul. 
Um, yeah, I, I definitely worry about that. I worry that like the videos I'm making aren't actually helping anyone. And, and that would be a big bummer just because I'm, I put a lot of time into them and I'm basically dedicating all my, that's exactly why I've, I've got Ian and Josh and Michael on the way coming to help us out because if I put my time into production and just focus on making products, then um, then the videos disappear, the, um, you know, my email, my inbox support dies, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I spend, I already spend 12 to 14 hours a day just trying to keep up with videos and my emails and all that kind of stuff. So if I take away the videos and I lose, we lose this kind of connection with the community that we have, which I really love. Uh, you know, this is it right here. It's happening. Like as you guys are sitting here typing and commenting and asking questions, that connection is really easy to lose when I stop. Like, like I was telling, you know, mentioning with the uh, Leo's. Oh, okay, you meant your the live feed. Yeah, I get that, man. Thank you so much. Um, I took a little hiatus to build the course, and I felt like I kind of lost. I didn't. Not kind of. I felt like we really lost some engagement and connection with the community and I don't want that to happen again so I'm gonna keep posting the videos consistently and try and really connect and stay in touch and uh, I'm gonna need a lot of help here in the shop and um, you know wit has been knocking it out of the park with shipping so that I just don't have to worry about any of that stuff and I can focus on bringing value to the community like this and, and trying to help out so um, you know big thank you to everyone everyone that's here right now we got like 73 of you in the live stream and I really appreciate that because you're the community you're the ones that are like keeping you know you're the the heartbeat of the community the pulse and um, everyone's learning everyone's like in that stage of like yeah, I don't know what I'm doing and everyone kind of has that imposter syndrome like ah, I shouldn't be here I don't know what I'm doing but no you are you, you do belong you are the community if you're trying to figure out leather craft and um, either you're just trying to learn little techniques or you're trying to sell your work, you're it. You're part of the community and we're all in this together. So I really appreciate you being here. Um, Jose says Aqualim 315 is good. Just highly recommended to stitch the same day. I waited the next day because it was super late. Then when I was stitching, it started to separate. Oh, really? That's, that's interesting, Jose. I haven't had that experience um, I'm trying to think of why that would happen you know, there's a lot of things you can do to get a better bond when you're when you're gluing like you it depends on the leather you know if you're going flush side to flush side you probably don't need to do this but you should usually rough the leather up before you lay down some adhesive and sometimes it's oh I lost my light batteries might have died I've got a janky little LED light here that I use sometimes uh oh it's shorting out <laughs> all right we'll leave it off anyway um so making sure the leather's roughed up is really helpful and then also um tapping it down with a hammer is also helpful like you would think that you could just kind of push down with your finger or even like use a roller but it's this is something i learned when i was talking to bill out in georgia is um the impact there's there's science behind it and I don't fully understand it, but there's something about the impact and the the kind of the rebound is what causes the adhesive to get a really strong bond. So hitting with a hammer does more good than you think. Um, so yeah, um, making sure you rough up the leather, make sure you get a really good impact with the hammer, you know, you tap it down and then um, Sometimes it helps to even do like a second coat like I'll do one coat of the glue and if it's something that I need a really strong bond like if you watch my last video I made the handles on that firewood carrier and It was nine to ten or eight to nine ounce leather it was really heavy trying to fold a two inch strap in half like I could not get those things to To stay put um, I mean you're kind of asking the glue to do the impossible at that point So I wasn't fully expecting it to hold but I decided to wet mold the strap put it in the clamp um, and I did like two or three layers of the adhesive before I clamped it down um, and that that usually helps but yeah after I did that it worked great so those are like two or three things that can really help get a better bond with it 
Okay, Tobias says, what's the size of your current shop? How big is your large cutting table? Um, yeah, I answered this before, so sorry for repeating myself, but the shop's a 16 by 40. Somewhere around 700-ish square feet, I think. And um, I can't remember. I think the cutting, I think my workbench is like 4 by 8. I should know this because I built it, and I remember the measurements at one point, but... I think it's four by eight and then the cutting surface is let me pull it up I've got a link I've got all these links saved because I get these questions a lot and if you DM me I'll send you the actual link but let's see it's a site called speedpress.com so you just tell them the dimensions of your cutting space and they send you a rolled up piece of cutting mat that, that works pretty good so um, yeah, I've used this is my second one that I bought and it it's holding up pretty good. You just have to like heat it up before you lay it down on the table because it wants to like roll itself up. It won't lay flat. You know, it's thick stuff. So you got to heat it up really good. And then I think I even threw some grabber screws like in the corners just to hold it down so it doesn't slide around and stuff. All right. Let me grab some of these comments. Um, pull back a little bit brother your videos are the reason I began to craft I always do my best to jump in your life thanks so much Jose no your videos are definitely informative and educational thank you so much airbrush is even more than airbrush is more even than the dauber just depends on the look you're going for appreciate the inclusion part of the community sentiment definitely times at start you question your validity start up Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I totally agree with that, man. It's it's really high. Everyone does that. I've even questioned myself that because, I don't know, there's just so many people doing so many cool things out there and comparison definitely steals your joy. So even if you're doing something you really love and you're having fun with it, um, you know, doubt can creep in and, and really ruin the fun. And so I, I'm a victim of that. I guess, I don't know if victim's the right word, but I definitely have fallen to that. And um, yeah, you just gotta, you have to stop it, whatever it is. Like the comparison, if the comparison's stealing your joy, then stop comparing and just focus on doing things you love. That's kind of what these videos have always been about because they don't always perform well. The last few videos I've posted have been like a total flop. I mean, in 2019, my videos were pretty regularly getting like anywhere from 50,000 to 100 to 200,000 views. And that was like a regular thing. I was getting used to that. And then um, I took a little hiatus to build the course. When I came back, my videos are getting like five to 6,000 views. And it's crushed me a little bit. But then, um, you know, I've, I've put a lot of thought into it. And I've realized that it doesn't really matter because I'm just doing things that I love. I'm making fun videos and um, I'm contributing to the community which is the really important part of it to me is making sure that we're like there's a lot of give and take and we're helping each other out and we're allowing the leather craft community to thrive and grow so um, yeah part of me wonders like if the videos were getting hundred thousand views then maybe it would be more impactful at that but in the end I don't really care because it's like, even if there was one person getting value out of my videos I'd be happy so um, yeah, it's hard to remember that and I'm, you know, I'm always like, I'm always kind of doubting myself and I'm trying to stop that, but um, what are some of your favorite resources for hardware? Definitely Buckle Guy. I think it's like one of the only, I recently ordered some Japanese brass from District Leather Supply because I like the color of brass a lot more. It's kind of like a muted... I've got I've got one right here. Oh, belt down. Um, this is one of those brass buckles from District Leather Supply. It's like a really muted, beautiful, kind of brushed looking brass. And uh, I, I just love it so much. So I bought some. Buckle Guys is a little this like this rivet's from Buckle Guy and it, it's it's like a really shiny kind of finish of the brass. And so I don't know. I, I, I would love it if Buckle Guy had a brass finish that was a little more attractive and not so like cheap looking. I don't know, the really like shiny, reflective kind of brass versus the toned down, like muted, matted look. 
Um, but that just might be my opinion. So I'm not, you know, I'm not claiming that Buckle Guy should do exactly what I want. I just personally wish that's what they were selling, because Buckle Guy is the best um, resource by far. That the good thing is they have such a wide variety of hardware, and then whatever piece of hardware you choose, you know, or, or sorry, whatever finish you choose, you know that you can get any hardware you need in that same finish. And that's why Buckle Guy is so. Um, valuable. I mean, I can't tell. Like, let's say you're making a bag and you you want, you know, like I found some buckles that I really liked from some one-off weird website, but then I need some D rings and trigger clips and rivets, and I want all the finishes to match, and you can't. So that's when Buckle Guy is really valuable. I love Buckle Guy for that, um, and they're always adding new stuff. I mean, they're always blowing my mind with like the finishes and color. Uh, types of hardware that they add. Going to test the barge versus water base on wood myself here this afternoon. I'll let it set for 24 hours and try and pull them apart. You have leaked my curiosity. That's awesome, man. Let me know how it goes. Wife needs some help, so I got to run. I'll catch the replay later. Thanks, Parker. Right on. Thanks, Jeff. Glad you jumped in. Hope all is well with you and the family. Hope you're keeping busy. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, all is very well. We're Happy as always. Um, good morning, Kindred Motocrosser from Idaho. Right on, David. Yeah, I think I've seen your comments on the on my Buscadero channel. I'm curious, are you into the vintage motocross scene as well, or is it just or just like motocross in general? I like it all, obviously, but yeah, there's I've got a real soft spot in my heart for vintage uh, motocross bikes. I don't know what it is, um, but the the scene's really blowing up. There's new series and new races and new you know riders popping up all the time it's pretty fun we're heading to idaho in april actually for the boise inter am vintage race i think i butchered the name of that but yeah it's in boise and uh it's gonna be a fun race it's one of the biggest vintage races out there so if you're if you're interested in any of that stuff go follow busket Arrow motorcycles um, because I don't really post as much of it on Stock and Barrel. I know that it's mostly just kind of a leather-centric feed, and I throw a little bit of the vintage bikes in there sometimes, but um, if you want to, like, dive real deep into the vintage racing scene, go follow Buscadero. Do you need a special stamping foil to hot stamp, or can it be any foil? No, it's definitely got to be, a, the, uh, like, a... It's, it's like a special, like, transfer paper kind of stuff. Just search... Um, heat imprinting foil. I don't know. I, I got to look more into that. I haven't done much foil work, but whenever I do it, I really enjoy it. I just want to find better colors, a better source for the foil because, yeah, the gold that I have is like really shiny gold. Look at me going back to this same concern, but I, I don't like, like the, like brass is just so hit or miss. It either looks really good or it looks really bad to me. So, um, the foil is kind of the same way. Like if you go watch Ryan's videos from Little King, his foil, I got to ask him where he gets his foil, but it's like a more of like a rose gold color, like a, a little bit more red than yellow. And it's just so beautiful, so beautiful. Um, but yeah, I just haven't dove into the foil stamping much. Hello from, where did that go? It moves on me and then I lose my place. From Logan, what's up Jim? That's cool man, you're like 40 minutes away. Keep up the good work, greetings from Greece. That's a little further away. Any hot foil with, will work. Oh yeah, any hot foil, but I, I didn't know if you were talking about like, just like uh, aluminum foil, I don't know. I, I guess I didn't understand the question. I always patina my brass. That's cool man, how do you do that? What's your process for that? Alan and Bradley, how's it going? Hello from Sweden. Which stamping machine do you use? I'm still using the Tandy one. I don't know if you can see it in the back. It's right there. <laughs> um, yeah, it's all right. It does the job. It's definitely like one of my favorite pieces of equipment that I've gotten from Tandy, but um, I don't think it's the best heat imprinter out there. I would probably rather have like a Kingsley or a Quick Print, one of those that has like a much bigger workspace. And then the important thing to me is the, 
the way that the dies mount because I think it's the Kingsley's one of those they they have just like a really universal clamp that kind of comes in and just squeezes the die and you can use any of your dies but with the Tandy one you got to have this really specific um, die made up with their jig and luckily leather stamp maker m makes dies to fit that jig and it's pretty cheap because you don't want to order it from Tandy I mean it's not their fault but I think they're just ordering from China it's insanely expensive and we're talking like three hundred dollars or something for one stamp it's crazy and I think I had to wait like six months to get my die so again it's not their fault that's not their I think they just kind of plugged into some resource to make it available but it's it's not the way to go uh, definitely go to leather stamp maker dot com or net leather stamp maker what is it leather stamp maker what's their website Oh yeah, dot com. Leatherstampmaker.com. Um, and this if you have the Tandy machine, just tell them you have the Tandy one and, and they'll, you know, make the jig for you. So Kingsley Quick Print, I think those are probably better machines. You can find old ones, but they're also still making them. So I'm gonna get one of those soon. Now that we're like doing production. You have to realize like most of the things here in the shop are, are just kind of like I mean nothing's really set up out here. We all of our main production happens at Waterbury. So this is just like me dinking around out here and I don't have the best of the best stuff. So as we improve our in-house production, I'm definitely focusing on getting better equipment. We're gonna get a you know, hydraulic clicker press. I'm gonna have to get a couple more machines since we'll have a few people going at a time. And um, it's gonna be expensive. But um, yeah, I want a new heat imprinter so we can, I wanna start like offering customization and just getting better imprints, more consistency, I think. Um, you can patina brass with white vinegar. Cool, man. I actually tested using what, so does the vinegar like remove the shine? Because I think that's what I don't like about the Buckle Guy brass is that it has like a really reflective shine to it. Um, I actually tested using wood glue type bond too for leather to wood and it holds really strong. Just don't know if it would have the adverse effect on the leather. Further testing needed. Yeah, cool. Keep me updated on that. I'd really like to see a video from you about the binding attachment you ordered from Texo. Yeah, that's a good idea, man. I think I'll do that. Um, yeah, I'll do it. I just have to say all you creators are huge inspiration. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that. Salt and ammonia brass patina, easy peasy. Brass patina. I'm just curious what it ends up looking like. It, like what results do you get? Does it make it look like when you say patina? Does it just kind of make it look older? Um, does it like give you the? Does it darken it? I'm just I'm trying to figure out. I'll have to do some research on that. I I don't think I want to do it regularly. Like like let's say we have to make 200 bags. I'm not gonna do this treatment to all 200, or it would be what, all 400 center bar buckles on the front, every single D-ring, we're talking 400 D-rings. I mean, this is like thousands of pieces of hardware for one production run of bags. So I don't see myself doing this like on a regular basis, but I just, I wish Buckle Guy would offer it like that. Looking just like this, man. This, this brass right here. Um, anyway, good morning from Morocco. Cool. The vinegar does remove the shine, but also gives a green black tint. I'm starting to envision like maybe like a big vat of vinegar and salt, maybe, or ammonia, salt and ammonia. I don't know which one's better, but, um, yeah, maybe maybe if you have a big vat and I do all the pieces of hardware all up front, I could see it working, but hmm, I'll have to think about that. I would like that. That would change things a lot for us, for sure. Um, let me go back to my notes because I had a few things I just wanted to hit up on before um, I just keep going through the uh, questions or the comments. Um, I have in mind that I'm really excited about is I'm going to start using our sponsors from for the videos sometimes we get companies that offer a sponsorship 
Like, um, I actually haven't lined any up for any of our actual videos, but I've talked about it so much throughout the years with different companies like Squarespace, Skillshare, um, Magic Spoon is one that we almost did recently for February and it didn't, it kind of fell through, but um, I'm really not interested in the sponsorships just to pay ourselves. What I would love to have happen is when a company offers to sponsor our videos, I take that money and give it back to the community in a way that can help support your business or your craft uh, to kind of get you started. Because I know that when I was getting started, I would have given anything to have kind of a, a jump start like that, to have like 500 to 1,000 bucks to buy the right tools I need or buy some leather to get started. Or maybe if it's even just like to build a website. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna reach out to partners like Buckle Guy and District Leather Supply, Rocky Mountain Leather Supply, see if I can get any of them on board to contribute to this. But if not, we'll just take the money that we would have made from a sponsorship from like um, Squarespace, Skillshare, Magic Spoon, whatever, and um, I'll just take the cash that they send and literally send it back your way. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to do it. I think um, the way it's gonna, I think the way that I'm, I'm hoping to structure this is that I'm gonna set up a membership platform on YouTube. So. Basically, if you haven't seen this yet, there's a way that you can sign up to be a member of our channel separate from like our regular videos. Those videos that I post will always be free, like the, you know, the weekly project-based videos. Those are going to be free. But there's going to be a membership that you can join through YouTube. It'd be like $2 a month. There might be a tier that's $5 a month, but it'll allow you to jump into these live streams uh, privately. So for now, these live streams are not behind the paywall. They're just available to everyone. But pretty soon, and I have, I'm not sure when it's going to be, but I'm going to put it behind a membership. So you got to pay like two or five dollars a month to be behind the paywall, and then we'll have this private live stream chat once a week. And um, the the reason for doing that is not just to make money. I'm not just trying to like profit off you guys. I, I know it seems like a cash grab, but I think it'll give me a good idea of the people who are very serious about, you know, being engaged in the community. And if I have someone that, um, you know, let's say we get four or 500 people that sign up, that narrows down the pool of people that I can, you know, kind of reach out to and engage with. And um, in terms of like, who am I gonna send this money to when we get, you know, this sponsorship program going. Um, I don't know what to call it, a scholarship, whatever it is. Maybe maybe it's me, um, I'm considering myself, uh, what would it be? I don't want to say like an investor in your business, but I don't know. I just, I want to help you guys out. So whatever it's called, um, scholarship program, whatever. I want to, um, I think having the membership will allow me to kind of narrow down the pool of people who are very serious about this and allow me to kind of communicate you with you on a more intimate and um, smaller group. So if that's you, I hope you don't mind spending two to five dollars a month. It, will, it will, shouldn't be any more than that, but um, I'm not sure exactly what the tier will look like, but I would love to engage with you on that way. And then I'll probably just pick randomly people from that pool, whoever's in that, you know, membership group. Um, I'll just pick randomly to, um, you know, help support your business. So. Obviously, this, you can tell this isn't very fleshed out yet. I'm just, I just—I kind of thought about it right before the live stream. I've been thinking about doing a membership for a while, but I just—I'm trying to figure out how to make it valuable for you, and um, just how to make it so that we can help the community kind of move forward. Um, is there a dif disadvantage in marketing tooled versus non-tooled leather crafted merchandise because of the time involving? Yeah, it just depends. It just totally depends. Dennis, Dennis Coplin. Is that, I guess I don't know your last name. Is that Dennis from 21 Grams? Let me know, man. I, I don't, I, I want to know because I, well, first of all, I'd like to know your last name, but also I just don't want to repeat anything that we talked about yesterday in the clubhouse. Um, Trader Nell says, hey, what's going on, Nelson? 
LNLK, hi from Europe. Thanks for all the inspiration I got from you so far. It's so helpful, especially now that I've decided to start on my own. Just finished the number 60. Oh, cool, man. I'd love to see it. Send me a DM of the picture, or a uh, picture of the finished bag. Not so easy to get the same hardware here, though. Oh, that's too bad. I've heard that. I've heard that it can be a struggle. I was talking to Kyle from Noble Leather Co., about uh, how hard it is for him to get leather and keep it on hand. Uh, it's a struggle. I feel bad. Larry says, have to run. I'll catch the rest later. You inspire me to attempt new projects. Good, man. Thank you so much. A mentor. Yeah, I guess a mentor could be the word for it, but this would be more of like, it wouldn't really be like a one-on-one, -on -one, like me mentoring anyone. I, I'm not sure if that's something that would even be wanted. I'd I'd probably be open to that, but um, it would be more of me just kind of giving you a, what is the word? The word's right on the tip of my tongue, and I can't come up with it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, great idea, Parker. Thanks, Josiah. Glad to see you're here. Josiah was on the clubhouse conversation we had yesterday. Roger says I'd pay five a month for that. Cool, man. Um the clubhouse sesh was fun. Finally got to listen to a leathercraft related room. Yeah, most of them are like marketing based and there's even a pretty consistent room going for makers, but it's mostly woodworkers. And so as, as fun as it is to be a part of that conversation, it, I don't relate to it super well. And I would love to have a leathercraft room that's consistently going. And this brings me to my next point that I wanted to hit in my notes. Um, I wanted to talk about Clubhouse. If you haven't heard of it, it's a new app and it basically imitates uh, sitting around a dinner table and chopping it up with your Leathercraft friends. Um, it's really fun. I just found out, dang it, my camera's dying. Um, I'm gonna have to end this. Uh, we'll do this again. I'll talk about Clubhouse next week. Thank you so much for jumping on. This has been fun. Let's, let's talk more. Think of some questions to bring next week. And uh, yeah. We'll see you around. Thanks, guys, for jumping on. Love you all.